what is it, 602? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Council members Payne? Here. Claire? Here. Payne? Um, yeah. Who is here? He's present. Meredith? Here. Shelton? Here. You all please rise for the flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can I have the video statement, please? This meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel on the Comcast and SureWest cable system. Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv this Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. and Monday evening at 8 p.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A VHS copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Do we have any public comment? I have no speaker sheet. Okay. <coughs> Department reports, city manager's office, right. mid-year budget review. Mr. An Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> and Ted uh, expresses his apologies. He's unable to make it tonight, so he's asked me to fill in for him and provide the council with this update on the city's budget. Okay. Good evening to everybody. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to apprise the council as well as the community on the current status of the city's budget. What we've done is we've taken a look at the projected uh, or the budgeted revenues, took a look, take a look, taken a second look at all those revenues and see how close we are in the current year. Also taking a look at next year to see where we think we're going to come in at relative to what we budgeted last year. Done the same thing on the expenditure side. We've been uh, making a number of reductions and cuts where we could without a reduction in services to the community. I'm going to present those to the council tonight, and then we'll also talk a little bit about the fund, fund balances, uh, how we're looking as far as the general fund reserves and some of our other accounts. We're going to talk a little bit about culture and rec fund, general fund, and the impact fees, which are the fees that we receive from the development community for building new, uh, new construction in town. And then we will talk a little bit about kind of what staff sees coming, uh, not only between now and the end of this fiscal year, but uh, next fiscal year, what we can expect, and then long term, some strategies and things in order to make sure that we can ride out this economic storm that, that the whole country is going through. We're hopeful that things through the federal stimulus package will help the city. We're hoping, hopeful that the state budget, which we understand has recently, the, the budget or the, uh, <clears throat> the legislative leaders have recently come to some kind of tentative agreement with the governor that they have hoped to be able to. Uh, unveil here shortly. I've heard that there should be a vote by this Friday. So hopefully they're not uh, balancing their budget on our backs. We haven't heard a lot of the details yet. I know there's some a combination of uh, expenditure reductions and tax increases and, uh, and borrowing as well. So once we learn the detail of that, we'll have a better idea of how that might, might or might not affect the city. Having said that, let's go ahead and get into some of the details. You've all received a copy of the report which outlines all of this, um, but I will go through it uh, for your benefit as well as the benefit of the, the public. <coughs> First thing we'll start with is general fund revenues. And you see listed up here some of our more significant revenues were the ones we felt that uh, were, had a potential of being impacted the most due to the current economic conditions. Uh, you can see at the top you have property taxes. We actually think the property taxes are going to come in a little bit higher than what we thought. We originally budgeted a 2% reduction in property taxes. Uh, we think it's going to come a little bit in a little bit better than that. So you're seeing there a uh, $67,000 increase over the budgeted amount. Again, you, you have several columns here. The first one is the original budget. That's what the council adopted last year in June. 
<clears throat> supplemental appropriations, those are things that the council has acted upon already approving additional expenditures in the current year. And then the revised estimate, these are staff's new revenue estimates based on the information, the revenues received to date, and our best projections about what we think is going to come in for the remainder of the year. And then you have the increase or decrease in the percent change is the final column. Sales tax is one where we are seeing the most significant hit in the current year, almost $300,000. Now, the reason for this is largely because last year we had an overpayment, a significant overpayment in the sales tax. And unfortunately, that number was used to project revenue for the current year as well as next year. So what you'll see is a reduction in the estimate for the current year as well as next year, a similar amount about $300,000 in each year. What's interesting is that even though this is a reduction from our estimate, it's actually not a reduction from actual amounts uh, from compared to the prior year. We're actually, our sales tax is going up very slightly, I would say about 1% between now from comparing the current period uh, this fiscal year compared to the same period last fiscal year. So sales tax, if we didn't have that one-time anomaly that caused us to to misestimate the current revenues, we would be right on with what we've received in previous years, which is good. Now, you know, 1% increase isn't as good as the 8 or 9 or 10% we had seen in previous years, but still compared to most cities that are experiencing significant decline in sales tax, uh, you, you know, you see anywhere from 5 to 15%, some cities or even higher, those cities that rely heavily on automobile sales or RV sales and other types of large box, you have Circuit City and Mervins and all these uh, places that are going out of business, the cities that have those in their community are obviously going to be uh, much greater, um, much more affected than the city of Galt is. So we're, we're fortunate that uh, we don't have that reliance. Now in the good times, we're, always, we're always jealous of the cities that have the car dealers and, the, and the, all the big bucks, but times like this, it actually works to our advantage because we haven't built up our budget and our personnel and everything based on the higher revenues. Um, going down through the list, there aren't a whole lot of other big items, although I will point out a couple of them. The transient occupancy tax, those are our hotel room taxes. And we're seeing a slight decline in occupancy at the existing hotels. Also, I believe we anticipated towards the end of this fiscal year that the new Holiday Express would open, and that's been, that's been pushed back. They have not given us a new date, although they have, I spoke with them about a week ago, and. Um, he's, he's asked for an extension on his, on his permits, and he's still hoping to find financing and move that project forward. So we're, hoping, we're still hopeful that that'll come forward, but we've had to push back our estimates on that. And then the state motor vehicle, that's down for a couple different reasons. One is registrations are down, but also the state's provided us with some new numbers showing what the likely impact is going to be uh, for, for all cities. And it's based on, it's kind of a convoluted way that they distribute those sales taxes. It has to do with a triple flip, and it, and it, it's based on um, property tax numbers and some other things. So after it's all calculated, um, we're showing about a $76,000 decline in the current year on our state motor V revenues. The only other thing I want to point out, there are some reductions here on some of our, our planning related items, plan check fees and uh, encroachment permits, planning recovery, those things are obviously down because the development activity is down in the current year, although it's not down that significantly. You know, we, we still have some development going on. We have some projects happening, mainly on the commercial side. There's not much residential growth, but we do have some commercial projects moving forward, so we have collected some fees relative to that in the current year. Also, uh, our treasurer last meeting talked about interest, the city's interest being down now, and it will continue to be down in the future. So this reflects an adjustment of interest of $25,000 in the current year. When I get into the next year, it will be an even more significant reduction of, I believe, $85,000. So that's, that's something we need to keep in mind, too, that the interest is, is, will have an effect on our budget and our revenue. The, the $740,000 you see in here under supplemental appropriations, those are grant funds, largely grant funds. There are some of the, the interest numbers are in there and a few other things you see notes on the bottom. But most of that is one-time grant funds, so it raises our revenue and the estimates actually up. You see here $382,000 increase in revenue is what we're showing on here. But if you factor out all those one-time grants, 
our revenue is actually going down about three hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars in the current year so next year we project things to get worse not surprisingly um, actually sorry before I go on to next year I want to talk briefly about the some of the other funds that are the most significantly impacted by the economic conditions. First is the Culture and Recreation Fund, as the council is aware of the, um, the, the spaces at the Galt Market have not been reserved and, and rented to the extent that they once were. We've seen this over the last um, year or two. We're down. Uh, at our peak, we were up at about $3.5 million. And we're down to about $2.7 million in the current year. So over time, we've had significant reductions. The current year, we estimate it's got the Galt market space rentals at about 2.8. We're thinking now that it's going to be around 2.7. And that largely is because of the rent reduction for January and February that the council authorized uh, back in December or whenever that was. So that's, that's reflected in there. You see the reduction of $142,000. That's largely because of that rent reduction that we had out of the market. Do you see the other column? that shows uh, an increase of 29575 That is due to the library uh, paying the city for maintenance of that building. It's something they have done with other cities, and uh, a number of months ago they offered to provide that level of funding to us, too. So that's an increase in the revenue. Overall, in Culture and Rec, we're down uh, about $119,000 in the current year. That's about a 4% decline. But none of that is unexpected because we brought that back to the council when we did the fee reduction. Impact fees, this is where we're really seeing the largest hit. And it's 100% because development is not coming in the same way that we projected last year. Uh, we are still having some development. We're estimating revenues of about $2.7 million in all, in all the various impact fees, which includes traffic, uh, general government, police, parks, uh, Quimby, which is park land. Uh, water connections, sewer connections in the northeast area impact fee. We originally had estimated we were going to receive about $6.8 million. So it's a significant reduction of four, a little over $4 million in the current year. It's a 60% decline or reduction in, in revenues. And I'll talk in just a minute about how we believe these reductions will impact the various capital improvement projects that we have going on in the current year as well as uh, the next several years. Okay, moving on to next year on for the general fund. Again, it's a in the current year we're expecting revenue declines of about three hundred and fifty eight thousand dollars. Next year we think it will be greater, uh, upwards of one million dollars, just over one million dollars from what we estimated last year. The biggest hits are in uh, again sales tax for the same reason I already described. Property taxes we think will go down a little bit more than we anticipated. Uh, uh, again, transit occupancy taxes, largely because the Holiday Express is not, uh, we don't anticipate to open next year. Further reductions in all of these fees, and, and a much larger hit on the development fee side. You see all of the building permit fees, the uh, engineering plan check fees, and so forth are down significantly. We don't want to rely on projections or expectations that, that the housing market or commercial real estate market is going to improve significantly next year. So we've almost, we haven't zeroed out development because we still think there are a few projects in the pipeline that will move forward, but most of them have been, have been erased off of our books. I think what we projected maybe six new homes next year. Um, so we originally estimated 25 or 30, if I remember right. So <clears throat> that's why we see uh, the reduction that we do in, in the general fund. So it's about a 12% reduction from where we current when we originally thought we were going to be. For the Culture and Recreation Fund, very similar to the current year, we we believe that this uh, will be steady. The, 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 the market revenue will not continue to decline next year, that will kind of level off. And we've been pretty steady over the past year. We haven't seen further deterioration. We're, we have a pretty steady average going on right now. Um, we're not sure what we're going to do yet as far as um, doing another rent reduction for January and February of 2010. We put it in here just as a, a placeholder anticipating that we may want to do that. So that has been accounted for in these, in these estimates. You can see the reduction of 
$142,000 again for next fiscal year. And that will be a decision that the council will make sometime next year, depending on how things are going at the market and what the revenue conditions and expenditures are with the, at the city at that time. The impact fees, again, there are they are down about $3.7 million in that year compared to what we originally estimated. Uh, still, there are, some, there are some fees coming in, about $4.2 million, largely from the commercial side. There are several different commercial projects that we anticipate moving forward, the largest of which is the Galt Place project. That one um, is anticipated to be under construction now, but the agreement with them says that they won't actually pay their fees until the building is open. And, ba and based on their current construction schedule, I think they're hoping to break down in April. And it's a 13 month construction cycle that would put them into about May of 2010. So then we would re we receive those revenues at that time. So that's a big portion of those fees are from that one project. Okay, uh, in light of the revenue reductions we're experiencing, staff has been proactive in recommending and, and implementing expenditure adju adjustments where we could. And uh, I'm going to go through those briefly. First thing we did was across the board 5% maintenance and operations reduction for all city departments. That results in savings in the current year of about $93,000. In addition to that, there were a number of other reductions that we were able to make. In the current year, we, uh, the city manager reduced the contingency that he has by, by $25,000. Uh, we've had showed some savings in insurance. Some of the other departments identified some additional savings. Uh, we did have a few increases. We had uh, some some outside plan check services that were coming are going to come in higher than we we budgeted and so forth. So that the net under that second line item is a savings of about fifteen thousand dollars. We deferred one capital item. The only capital item we had budgeted in the general fund was the city hall emergency generator replacement. We have installed um, something that we think will get us by for a while. It's an um, emergency notification system in the event that the power goes out, the generator doesn't, doesn't kick on. It will send, uh, it will actually call the police department and let them know that the power is out, that they can come over here and get the generator operated or find alternative means for getting their communication equipment and so forth running. Uh, there's some equipment on the roof here. That I think it's the, the radios and so forth that rely on that equipment, so it's important that we have some functionality there. So we think that will get us through for a little while. So with, that results in about $70,000 in savings in the current year. Finally, we have salary savings. This is a combination of different things. Uh, as the council is aware, we have frozen a number of different positions in the city, several in the community development department, one in the police department, um, in the, and then also from the culture and rec side, um, a position in the Parks and Rec Department. We also have, uh, in the process of finalizing some revised labor contracts with staff, we hope to bring that back to the council in March, which should result in some savings as well. We're anticipating the savings in the current fiscal year at about $162,000. This is just for the general fund. So overall, we are showing savings of $341,000 in the current year. Next year, a little bit more, about $351,000 really in the same area we're expecting or we're anticipating continuing the 5% maintenance and operations reduction into next year um, with some other larger cuts in some of the other areas um, and then salary savings as well next year. So over the, the two years we have about $700,000 in savings to reduce expenditures just in the general fund. Culture and recreation, we did very similar things. We had a, the 5% maintenance and operations reduction. Uh, they were not able to take all of the, the reductions out of their maintenance and operations, so there were some impacts on their uh, part-time salary line items there in order to make the required adjustments that the city manager asked for, and, and which in the current year is $50,000, next year is $76,000. You can see salary savings of $20,000 and $30,000 for uh, various reasons. And then you can see in the current year, the expenditure reduction, that's from the market rate adjustment. What they did was they had a frozen position, which they had some savings from that. They had a few other projects and some other things that they were able to find savings in the current year. Next year, we, we showed an offset there as well. So in the current year, we have a savings of $201,000. Next year, almost $250,000 in culture and recreation. 
Okay, impact fees. Here we have a list, provided a list to the council of the projects that we think will be impacted by the reduction in impact fees. These are ones that we would recommend that, we, that will be delayed. Uh, we don't have, we haven't finalized or gone back and revised the capital improvement program. We will do that as part of this upcoming year budget process. So you will see all the details as far as how far they're going to be delayed and everything else. But this at least this gives you a snapshot of which projects we believe will be impacted. And once we update the official budget in a couple months, you'll have more details on this as well as the other programs. Um, I'll go through the list quickly under the general improvements category. We have the city hall renovation which was anticipated to start this fiscal year. All of these actually in this category were anticipated to start in this fiscal year. Corpyard Annex site improvements, MSC and Corpyard Annex gated entries, and the MSC office expansion. Uh, especially with the expansions and, and so forth, we don't see as big of a need to proceed with those projects. The revenues are down. We may uh, need to move forward with a portion of some of these projects, like the city health renovation. There's a need for some security enhancements and up upgrades that we may move forward with, with anyways. We still are anticipating moving forward with the design phase of those because there's sufficient funding to do that. We just wouldn't actually start the construction until there was sufficient funds to do that. Under transportation, a couple projects, the Trillion Boulevard, Walnut Avenue traffic signal, that was largely driven by the, the need for traffic control there because of the movie theater. And that's been delayed. We don't know when that's going to happen, so we think it's prudent to just push that off until we, we're more confident that that's going to happen. Additionally, the Marengo Road Railroad at grade crossing, that's another project that's driven by development. It was, it's a crossing over by Elliott, and Elliott is actually conditioned to put that in as part of their phase three, one of their later phases that uh, they're not going to be moving forward that phase in the near future, so that project will then get delayed as well. Under transportation, it's important to we can talk about the Centro Interchange for a second because that's a big project everybody always asks about. How are we doing on the funding for the Centro Interchange? We still we don't um, we don't anticipate delaying that project. When we did the budget last year, we knew there was a gap in the funding from the developer impact fees that, they, that there wasn't enough in there to move the project forward in there, but we felt that either through uh, internal borrowing, we have some other impact fee funds where we have excess funds, for example, the Northeast Area Fee Fund 31, we have um, $13 million in there, and we don't have the urgent need for projects out of that fund that we could potentially borrow from there. We also have the potential to use redevelopment funding and also potentially money from the, either the federal stimulus package or other grants and other things that may be out there. So. We feel like through those combination of efforts, we'll be able to make up that gap, which right now is projected at about $10 million. So again, right now we're moving forward. The right-of-way acquisition is going well. The design is about 95% complete. We're hoping to go out to bid for the project in the fall, right? Okay. Parks projects. Harvey Park expansion was originally planned for next year. We're proposing to push, push that off just simply we don't have the funds available to continue to proceed with that project in that time frame. And Walker Park Phase 1B, which originally was going to be the artificial turf and the two um, baseball diamonds and a few other things, that may need to be delayed. We've had some internal conversations about shifting some of the phasing around, potentially moving the, the artificial turf up, but we're still considering different options. We'll be bringing that back to the council in the future to discuss that. One of the concerns we have about opening up a new park right now is the maintenance costs of that park. So it's something we need, we need to look closely at. Um, just because we have the money to build it doesn't necessarily mean we have the money to operate it. So it's some of the things we're going to be looking at closely before we actually award a contract for construction on that park is we make sure we have the funding available to maintain it. Last thing we want to do is open it up and then not be able to service it. Okay, a couple of water and sewer projects, Trillion Reservoirs, again, this is a project that was needed due to growth, expected or anticipated out in the northeast area. With that growth not occurring, the need for the reservoirs is no longer there, at least in the near term, so we're pr proposing just to push that one off. Uh, on the sewer side, the SCADA security improvements and the wastewater treatment plant expansion. Expansion, again, is not necessarily needed until we have developers wanting to move forward in, in which they, and they can help fund those improvements. One of the things, one of our key projects in addition to 
there's really two or three main projects that we're trying to focus on and we put as many resources as we could on those. One is the Central Valley Interchange, another one is the Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrades, but another one is the Live Oak Lift Station in Forest Maine. So some of these things we've had to delay in order to put the resources on those projects that we felt had the highest priority. So the SCADA security improvements is one where we still think it's a valid and, and important project, but we felt like the Live Oak was more important, so that one may have to get delayed a little bit. Uh, but at this point, it looks like we will be able to move forward with the construction of the, the Live Oak the station in Forest Maine, which, as the council knows, is a very important project to, to our community. Okay, let's, let's do a little bit of fund balance comparison. This is the, the big picture of where we stand with the reserves in our general fund as well as the, the culture and recreation fund. First is the good news. The good news is last year, when we did the budget, we had a projection of what we were going to have in the reserves at the end of the year. We originally thought we were going to have about $7.3 million. You can see that first, or I guess it's the second column, but the first column of the number, $7.3 million. We actually, at the end of the year, came up, came in a little bit better than that, $7.6 million. So we were up about $300,000 more than what we thought. When the audit was all said and done, we were a little bit better than what we projected. So that's good. So that $300,000 then carries us into the next year, having a little bit higher starting fund balance, which is a good thing. Without that, we would be down a little bit more. And, that, and, that's, and maybe just make a point here, because I think this reflects the conservative nature of staff in our revenue estimates and our expenditure estimates. We generally don't try to over-project revenues where we can. We try to be very conservative and same with expenditures. So typically, we will see this type of thing where th money goes back in more than what we thought. We try to be as close as we can, but we always want to err on the side of caution. So, you know, I would not be surprised if, if in the current year we end up a little bit better than we thought. But I'd much rather have us end up a little bit better than we thought than end up worse than we thought. So what you see in all these revenue and expenditure projections are our best guess, but on the conservative side. And that's what's reflected here, that we did end up a little bit better than what we thought. So that's good. Okay. Let's start now in the current year. We originally thought we were going to have the, the budget anticipated. We'd start the year, the first column at six point. Um, actually, sorry, this is this is the end. So this is the end of the current fiscal year. We thought we were going to end this year at six point one million dollars in reserve. Okay, if you add back the the, the three hundred thousand dollars we had left over from last year. And then you take the revenue adjustments we've already talked about, the expenditure adjustments we've talked about, and then we threw in the abatement adjustments. These are transfers in and out of the general fund based on the relative expenditures in each of the funds. The ending fund balance is going to be about $6.269 million at the end of this year. We originally projected we were going to be at 6.1. Now we're going to be, we think we're going to be at about 6.2. So we're up. About $131,000, if you look at that last column, we're up about $131,000 compared to where we thought we were going to be when we did the budget last year. We're a little bit better off, we think, than where we projected, which is, which is good news. Um, despite the fact that we are down in revenues, <coughs> we, because we made the, the, the reductions in the expenditures and because we had to carry over from last year, that's how we end up up in the current year, those things combined. Revenues are down, but expenditures are also down, and um, and the carryover. Now it's kind of it's, it's a little bit confusing here because on the, the revenue adjustment, the revenue amounts uh, here, and it shows that revenues are up, and then here it shows that the expenditures are up. Again, this is this is reflective of the one-time grant funds that I mentioned earlier when we're going through that. So that's all been factored in there, but essentially those negate each other because you have an increase in revenues when you get a grant, but you also have an increase in expenditures when you get a grant. So they kind of cancel each other out. So, Okay, let's look at next year now. When we did the budget last June, we thought at the end of June 30th, 2010, we were going to have in our reserve just over $5 million. Okay, that's that first column. You can see $5 million. Uh, because we were a little bit better off in the current year, $131,000, that helps us, but then you see that big hit, that revenue adjustment, that $1 million were down. You see the expenditure adjustments, the savings that we have from the salaries, from the maintenance and operation reductions, that helps us, that saves us some money there. And then the abatement adjustment, just a minor adjustment, 
So in total, we think we're going to be down about $587,000 from where we had originally anticipated. So our reserves will be about $4.45 million, almost $4.5 million in reserve at the end of 2010 or June 30th, 2010. We never like to see money come out of our reserves, uh, but it's still a healthy reserve considering we've gone through a couple years of down times. We still have in relative, in relation to the overall size of our budget, we're doing okay, especially when compared to other cities. You look at Sac County and they basically took all their money out of reserve last year. They took $55 million and so they don't have anything left for this year. So we're taking bits of it out every year, but we still have enough in there that we can carry ourselves a little bit. Okay, let's look at the big, the big picture now. Just some summary and some conclusions that staff has drawn through the prudent use of reserves and cost-cutting measures that staff has implemented. These, these we feel are sufficient to get us through the current year and next year. That'll end us at the end of uh, fiscal year 10 with about four and a half million dollars in reserve in our general fund, which is which is good. However, if the economy doesn't recover, if this is prolonged through 2011, 2012, in 2011 when we do the budget that year, we may be looking at much more significant and severe reductions to our expenditures and we may have to um, start talking about real significant impacts to, to staffing and other programs and things at the community. But right now, we think it's in the best interest in the community to use some of those reserves to get us through while not decimating them, leaving them whole healthy, make cuts where we can to avoid reductions in services to the community. So that's our current proposal to the council and recommendation. But again, we will be revisiting this on a frequent basis and it may we may, may have to make more severe cuts moving forward. And we may have to do it next year, depending on if the revenue estimates start coming in worse than we thought, then we'll have to come back and revisit this. But right now, this is our best guess as far as what we think is going to happen over the next year. As far as on an ongoing basis, market revenues continue to be a concern for the city. Again, earlier I, I, I mentioned that at their peak, we were about $3.5 million in market revenue. We're down to about $2.7 million. Okay, that's $800,000 in one year in difference. That's huge. And over a long period of time, we need to find some way to bring get that revenue back. Either the market revenues have to come back, and they may, with the economic recovery, they may come back, but they may not. We may never see the level of revenue that we once saw out of the market. We may have to further reduce uh, fees out there in order to keep attracting vendors. And so I would not rely on the fact and bet that those market revenues will ever get back to $3.5 million. So we need to find a way to supplement that revenue. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at more significant reductions despite, even if the economy recovers, we're going to have to look at other ways to augment our, our revenue or we're going to reduce services. We're going to reduce positions and other things in order to, to sustain us on an ongoing basis. Uh, and so this, this points to the fact that we need to continue to, to stress and focus on getting additional retail and other things in our community that will help bolster our sales tax numbers and other things. Right now, I don't believe our community, at the level that the market is now supporting us, the, 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 um, the revenues that we have through our sales tax and property tax and so forth are not sufficient to sustain the current level of services provided to this community. So we need to continue. And it's no secret that we're down. In, I mean, for a population our size, we're way underserved on sales tax. So we need to get that up to the more towards the average instead of at the bottom of, of the pile. So that's going to continue to be staff focused and bringing in some of those. And I know the council's committed to that as well. So it's going to be on a more longer term basis. We need to continue to focus on that. Uh, again, another unknown is the state budget. We're hopeful that there's not going to be big hits this year. But again, next year we don't know. The year after that we don't know. So things we're concerned about. Staff is going to continue to monitor the situation where we can make cuts. We will. We are right now implementing some other things that I, that I didn't talk about really, but we're not. Uh, we've cut travel and training budgets across the board unless it's something that's vital. Somebody has to get a renewal for a, a, a license or something in order to, to operate their job. Conferences and things of that that nature have been have been suspended. We're trying to cut everything that's not essential right now out of the budget as much as we can without impacting the community. So we will continue to look for ways and you will likely see additional cost-cutting measures in the upcoming budget that we, are, we will present to you this um, May or June. 
So again, the, the fiscal uh, position is not great. We would like to be going up instead of down, but given uh, the, the current fiscal situation across the country, we feel fortunate to have the reserves that we do, to be in the financial situation that we, that we are, that we're not forced with laying people off and doing furloughs and everything, and we're not forced to have significant reductions in service to the community. So I think, um, I think again, we are in a much better position than most cities, but we need to be prudent. We need to be uh, aware of what's happening, and we need to continue to, to strive to, to look at the city long term of how we're going to sustain ourselves and take advantage of those opportunities where we can see them. That is staff's presentation. Uh, I'm, there's a number of staff members here that have all kinds of information about their budgets or anything else that you might want to discuss. I'll open it up to the council for discussion and questions. Be happy to help in any way that we can. Sure. Council, I'll start on my right. In your projections, uh, for example, in your sales tax uh, revenue, did you guys project any increase or decrease over the next course of the next in the course of the next two years? In your estimates. I'll let Inez respond. She worked on the sales tax revenue. Originally, we um, actually showed some increases. We have a couple of retail businesses that we are expecting will come online. Um, so we did originally estimate an increase. The decrease that you are seeing today is a re direct result of what happened on the overpayment. Um, at, actually, it occurred in 2006, and it's just catching up due to the backfill and so forth. So we did project an increase, and I believe it was just about 1.4%, I think, is what we actually estimated an increase this year and for the next year. I know um, we're very lucky that we're in a situation where, if you look around, like I think maybe a month or two ago, I read Sacramento County, for example, they talked about 18% of the commercial properties were sitting empty at that time, and it's increasing. And here we are, we're building businesses. I mean, we're just, this is incredible that we're moving in such a positive direction there in these hard times. So yeah, we, were, we were very conservative with the estimates. Again, we do um, have some commercial establishments um, under development right now. We do know that the gas taxes, the prices have gone down, so we do expect a decrease there. That was kind of taken into um, in account as well. But generally, we did see, I believe, the estimates were 1.4% increase in retail sales. Okay. Um, now, I noticed two years we had that decrease of about 296, I believe it was, right? Uh, I thought we have it for two years, but I thought it was like around 250,000 that we had to pay back. But now it looks almost like 600,000. Actually, the amount was 256 thousand dollars. That's in the current year budget and next year's budget. When we went back in and looked at the estimates, we knew that the fuel prices were in there as well. So we had to actually adjust that to the current year budget, and you'll see the significant decrease next year. So in total sales. We're estimating to go down, but the calculation included 256,000 overpayment this year and next year, and that actually occurred in 2006. It's just catching up with us now. When you're talking about the transient uh, occupancy tax, when you guys did the estimate, the McGee Center, which actually brings in a lot of revenue for the community, I don't know if people realize it, but those recruits stay in those hotels here in Galt. Uh, they are going to suspend that training center for at least three to six months. And I think their last graduating class is, I think, in March, if I heard correctly. I believe it is. Did we put that into consideration as to the impact it would have on us? Actually, what happens with the correctional facility is that the ordinance actually reflects that if you are there um, and using a room for over 30 days, that you are not considered a transient. What CDC has done is entered into an agreement with um, a local establishment, and so we're not actually generating as much on the TO tax as we had originally expected because they are not considered transients. So um, we've already taken that into account. In year two of the budget, one of the adjustments that you see is that we did expect that Holiday Inn Express would be online by then. We actually decided to factor that out for next year. So yes, we did take that into account. Um, we had originally estimated that TO tax would be a little higher because of um, the use of CDC, but as it turns out, they have a longer-term agreement with them. Over 30 days is considered um, a non-transit. We're not receiving any revenues from that. The McGee Center is also used for testing and training uh, for other agencies, for example, testing, and they also use our hotels, and I suspect that we're not going to see that happen for a couple of years because I think that uh, uh, any other testing for promotions, et cetera, are going to probably be put on hold. Um, so I think that would affect us as well. Um, there's a new program, or we're seeing, at least with the property taxes, there's some adjustments being made. And uh, 
the new stimulus package, there's supposed to be some funding in which, if I understand correctly, is that what it's supposed to do is it's going to adjust property values, allow people to uh, potentially reduce their interest rates. And this is something I read that could be coming down uh, the pike. And I, But my question is, is this something we should be majorly concerned with if the government comes in and starts... And I don't think we're going to see a lot of it, but I think it's going to affect us in some way if they were to do that. Have we considered, have we given any kind of consideration if that were to occur? I'm not sure of the question or the item that's coming down. Uh, okay. No, I've just been reading about this, and, and there's some money in the stimulus package, from what I understand. There's some money out there that's supposed to help. And, uh, and I'm thinking that if they're going to write down... Uh, their mortgages, and the, these are for people whose mortgages are current and potentially, you know, are simply upside down. And so what they'll do is they'll lower the interest rates and possibly write off the difference. And if they would do that, in some cases, I'm just wondering if that will affect our property values. You know, I haven't looked at that. I know what we have included in in the estimates was basically we looked at the AV. We knew that the county actually reduced AV last fiscal year. Um, it did affect several parcels in our community. I believe it was about 23% of the parcels in our community. We have about 7,700 parcels. It affected about 23%. So we did factor that into our estimates. For the current year, we estimated that it would affect um, how many parcels um, from the county. And in fact, we just received some information from them that shows that there are approximately 347 parcels that will be further impacted in the current um, year on the tax roll. So we're looking at an impact of about 25,000. So I am aware of the Prop 8, the reductions, and the, and the market values, but I am not familiar with that, so I can certainly look into that and see if there will be any additional impacts to the city. Yeah, just because it could impact us. Uh, the wastewater treatment plant upgrades, and, I, and I've read a little bit, or I've heard at least, that, uh, that, that this possibly could be put on hold. Have we heard anything about this uh, possibly happening? Because the requirements from the yeah yeah as far as the requirements of you know uh, having this upgrade put in place at a certain point in time, yeah. do we know anything, okay. Greg? We haven't heard anything as far as freezing money with the stimulus package. All of the economic money that's coming for water and wastewater is going through the regional boards as part of that loan program. It's going for loans and not grants. So they've also changed the project amount from fifty from thirty five million to fifty million. So everything we're hearing is that there will be money in those programs. Okay. They're not easing up on the requirements. The requirements, to our knowledge. No, no they're not. In fact, they've uh, eliminated anybody who had an application in prior to a couple of days ago, which we did for our upgrade. You can't submit an application for the stimulus package, so we're excluded from that for this particular project. At least that's the rule right now. It may change tomorrow, but we're still planning on going ahead. We're moving forward with with that project and planning to get the money. Okay. Um, Another thing is, we receive funding, I believe it's state funding we receive for a position with PD. And we've got, every time we do the budget update, we talk about this. And I believe it's a detective position, and uh, where we get half the funding and we fund the other half. Uh, I don't see it funded in here. We have budgeted about 100000 You're talking about the COPS funding. Well, the COPS funding, yeah. And I think we, we have a, uh, where we, uh, we get uh, funding for 50% of the position, and then we usually fund the other half. And I know that it's probably been held up, and it probably goes to, I believe it goes to the federal government, to the state, and then eventually passes on to us. And we've probably been waiting for the uh, state to pass their uh, budget in order for that funding to be released to us. Yeah, because we're always worried about whether or not we're going to get it. We typically receive $100,000, and we never know for sure until the state passes their budget. It was included in the current year's budget, but with everything going on, they haven't actually released the payment yet. They've told us that it's that it's going to be coming. It's about $100,000 in, in the current year. We do have some some money that's saved from prior years that was not spent that should carry us through most of this. If we don't get that $100,000, we should have enough to fund that position through most of the fiscal year. If we if it doesn't come, we may have to look at some kind of general fund. Kind of we're not going to lose that position, but we we will have the funding if, it's, right. if, if, it, it, comes if it goes away you know, in, in the future, then we'd have to look at you know, what funds we use, Measure R, or some other funding source to backfill that, the state funds that we wouldn't receive. But in, the, in the budget, it's actually not shown in the general fund. It is shown as a separate fund. It's Fund 70, and it's uh, pursuant to AB 3229. And that was what we actually just talked about today was um, council, um, the police chief did present to council an appropriation of $100,000, and I believe that happened in November. Um, so we 
have to make an appropriation before we can actually submit the paperwork to the state. But again, the state isn't actually releasing any funds as of yet. Right. But um, we do expect that once we receive that, that that will carry us through a portion of next fiscal year and pursuant to the budget document. If um, there are insufficient funds, then we'll be bringing that back for council consideration on um, additional funding sources. Okay. I just don't want to see that position go away. Or... We'll certainly bring that back to council for consideration. Um... Other than that, I mean, everything I've looked at as far as the reductions and, and, and the CIP, I, I realize that it's, you've had to make some really tough, tough decisions here. And, and, I, and I want to point out something that really was important to me, at least, is that, uh, is that, that the layoffs that we're looking at all the other cities, Sacramento's talking about, what, another 500 positions. Um, all the other cities are, are, are just impacted. They're laying off police officers. Uh, Sacramento's talking about 50 to 70 correctional officers potentially being let go. And um, here we are where, you know, I mean, we're, you know, we're fortunate we have a good strong general fund to kind of carry us through these next couple of years. But in addition to it, we're still seeing a little bit of growth commercially. Unfortunately, we're not seeing the housing that we'd like to see on a positive side. Uh, but we are seeing the commercial growth. And we are most likely, and we're not likely, but we are going to see us actually hire more officers where other cities are laying off. So... I'm very optimistic about our position compared to others, even though I, I, I see that it's going to be, you know, some tough years ahead of us. Um, and I'm very grateful for that because I think uh, there aren't too many communities out there that can say this at all that I can that I've read about at least. At least nobody's bragging. Um, so I'm very grateful for all the work and effort that you guys put into this, and it's and, and, and it's good. And I'm hoping in the next couple of years, and I'm hoping this is not going to carry into 2011 or 2012. Because, uh, you know, I mean, if we're able to make it the next two years and weather it, and the other cities are already on the brink right now, I don't know where they're going to be in two years. And that's some real scary thoughts. But uh, one of the things that I said is important to me is that people aren't, we're not letting anybody go. That was my biggest fear is that I believe that if anything we can do to keep people working, we're all better off for it. So um, I'm very grateful for that. And I'll let some of the other council members comment. Andrew, thanks. <clears throat> losing my voice a little bit. I want to go back to the property tax issue again. I know. Uh, I was reading a press release from the Sac County Assessor from April of 2007 where they were projecting that over the 2008 budget year they would see a $1.5 billion reduction on 50,000 properties in Sacramento County. And instead, now that fiscal year 2008 is over, they saw a $6 billion reduction on 85,000 properties across the county. And I, I'm just, I'm really concerned that we're not projecting a big enough loss in property tax revenue. And I, I, you were describing how you've been working with these numbers, so I'm just curious to find out how we came to this conclusion. Actually, the update, I did receive the update as well. And what the county did is there was, um, I believe there's over 400,000 parcels in the county um, the latest release was 85,000 parcels were going to be reassessed. Of that, the impact to the city of Galt was actually 23%. They estimated 21% countywide. <coughs> Within the city of Galt, it actually was higher. It was 23% of our parcels. It was um, 1,800 parcels. That actually had an impact to us of last year of $130,000. So we actually knew about that. We built that into our estimates. Um, we received more current information for the current for the new year. That's again Prop 8, and uh, the number of parcels there, I think, is over 300, 347 parcels. We expect that there will be impact in the current year of 25,000. That's over and above the impact of last year. So we factored that in the estimates. We expect that the estimates will come in. In fact. Um, $67,000, we're expecting there will be an increase to the current year. So we are aware of it. We're working those numbers into our budget forecast, and uh, we'll see what happens at this point, but we feel confident with the numbers at this point. Okay. And my next question is for uh, Boyce and Armando. It sounds like staff is getting to the point where we're ready to declare that the market might never become what it, wa what it once was. So I'm wondering what we're going to do in the next year accordingly with, with our staff numbers out there. If we know that we're not going to have the peak that we used to, what are we doing to reduce our part-time employees out of the market? 
Actually, um, you won't see quite a reduction in staff numbers, only for uh, a couple of other different cost-cutting measures. Uh, we're using city employees uh, to do tra traffic control on the C Street Bridge. Uh, that was a cost savings of $25,000. Um, I'm also, um, people are just picking up the slack. We're, we've already made cuts um, in order to help with the shortfall. So we're, we're just not hiring as many people as we once did. People are doing the job of two people. For the part-time? For the part-time. Okay. Well, and including um, myself and the other two full-time people, we are actually, we're becoming more of workers and managers at this point. Okay. And then for Paula, what are we spending right now on average per council member on health care benefits? I don't know what the average is, but I know what the average cost is for a family, and it's a right around $1,100 a month for medical. Okay. And dental's right around $130, and vision is about 24 Well, in order to avert some layoffs in the future, I'd like to waive my council medical benefits and everything to prevent any layoffs. Um, I, get it, I get coverage at work, so I can pick it up there. And hopefully we'll be able to make cuts like that across the board to chip in a little bit to help out. And another thing for Boyce, I think it's come to a point now that we've got to abandon our support for helping to renovate the Golf High Stadium. It just doesn't look like we've got the money to do it. Maybe it's time to carry that message to the high school board and let them know that with the economy the way it is, we just can't help them out. Okay. I don't know if council agrees with that, but... Just, I, I don't think we're going to find the funding to help them in any capacity. So that's pretty much all I've got for right now. Again, Inez, thank you for uh, taking such a cautious look at this a year and a half ago, two years ago, projecting this. Uh, it's nice to know that we're not trying to make up that gap that Sacramento County is trying to make up. So thank you. Barbara? There we go. Uh, Paula, the CalPERS situation, is that going to affect us in the next two years? You know, they've had some really bad investments, and I know you've explained to me that we have a plan that sort of levels it off. Do you see that changing? Well, as, as of a couple months ago, it looked like we were probably, you know, the rates were going to stay about the same with maybe a, a slight increase, but we won't see that for a couple more years. They're, they're on a, you know, their valuations are delayed. Mm -hmm. So, but again, if the economy continues for the next three or four years like that and their investments have that type of um, return, then, we, you know, our rates will significantly go up. But we have to remember, prior to this last year, they had double-digit returns for quite a few years. So, okay. um, we didn't get our rate decrease, so that's, you know, where the smoothing comes in. You know, every department has reduced their maintenance and operation by about 5%. I'm just curious how how that is actually going to affect these departments. I mean, we say we're reducing maintenance and operations, but what exactly does that mean? Especially, I think um, I'd be concerned about um, maintenance. You know, if we're not maintaining the equipment and the things we have, um, that could be costly in the long run. So I've just the general idea of how we're able to re reduce it by 5% and still manage. I think every department has done it a little bit differently, and we left that up mm -hmm. to the department heads in order to determine where they were going to make their cuts. I know in certain departments, they may have originally projected or, or put in the budget to replace a computer, for example, and they're no longer going to be replacing that computer. Or there's training that they had in there that they've now cut the training or the travel. Um, maybe hear from some of the, the department heads about things that, that they cut. Um, I know that's from, from administration and, and human resources. Those are some of the things that we cut. I think it's probably pretty similar across the board with, with departments. But if any of them want to chime in, Chief, do you know some of the th areas that you guys cut? Um, because our training is mostly reimbursed, um, we didn't really go to a hit for training as much, but uh, we did cut um, you know, the miscellaneous items, the tools, equipment that uh, we were looking at buying, some surveillance cameras that we just, well, we put that on hold and 
Um, but we didn't forestall any maintenance of, of the vehicles or any of that. So things that are safety related, we we continue to park. The works was was similar. In addition to a lot of the, the training and travel, um, not going to leave California cities for myself, for example, was a a big savings in and of itself. That was the first thing that went. Training for other staff that was non-essential. Uh, books and periodicals they don't get necessarily the newest service manual, the newest version of this book that was cut. Um, we did cut some of the general engineering services by looking real tight at last year's budgets and see what we thought we might not be able to squeak by and, and not do something more. We do something ourselves, say traffic counts rather than, than hire them out. Um, it kind of varied among the two different years, but the majority of it was in the, the non-essential maintenance. We still maintain vehicles. We still maintain all the services, the equipment, uh, and we still have money that we can move around if something does happen to equipment. We deleted a couple of computers. If one breaks, we're going to have to replace it. it means we're going to have to give up something more. Just our estimate at this time. Do you feel that that's um, going to impact you critically, or do you feel pretty confident that you're going to be able to make it for the next two years with what we've got? It's not going to be easy. We don't. We have already cut the budgets. Last time around, we cut the budget. I think we had a status quo budget, and costs were going up, but we maintained a status quo budget. Uh, for the operations, that our power, we can't control what our power costs are, what the light bill is, all those kind of things. And so it means we take away from some of the other things that we do, buying the books, going to train that keeps us up to speed with what's going on. It's less uh, less materials, less tools and equipment. If something breaks, we don't have to, we don't have the ability to go out and fix it or to buy a new one. We have to then put off for next year. I think our fuel costs will be impacted. I mean, I would imagine that you would use probably more fuel than any of the other departments. It looks like it's going up again. Uh, the fuel cost is one that's all across the board. Right now, it's down, so we're realizing a savings. Um, mm -hmm. I think at one time we projected about a $60,000 savings over the next year in fuel versus what we had. No, it is going back up, so maybe that'll be about cut in half. One of the things we recently did was we changed the street sweeping schedule. We're actually providing more sweeping, and we're going to save $1,800 a quarter on gasoline. So we're making changes like that in the way we do things to try to pinch a penny here and pinch a penny there. Parks and Recs, you know, it seems like we, uh, in the past few years, we've been able to um, fix our parks up where we needed to fix them up. For example, example, the Lions Oak Park was one we went in and redid. How many uh, part-time people have you laid off? In what division? Market? Uh, oh, parks? No, parks. Parks. Well, this time of year, we, we, tend to de we tend to decrease the amount of hours that are on the uh, schedule, so we can put uh, more people on in the summer, because uh, the parks generally slow down in the winter. So um, I don't I don't know if we've really laid off anybody, as far as reduce the hours, uh, like like we tend to do every year, uh, so we can make it through on our busy busy times of the year. Um, when it comes to summer, we'll have to take another look at it. We'll be closer to seeing what our budget looks like for the end of the year, and we'd have to make those decisions then. I will say in, in some of the cuts we've been able to do, um, because the economy is bad everywhere, and um, uh, we've been able to renegotiate some of our, our uh, services, prices that we're using, like our um, uh, security system services. Uh, I, I met with them, <clears throat> told them that we were looking at cutting some of the services they provide for us, and uh, they took it back, uh, looked at it, came back with an offer of maintaining those services but reducing the monthly cost, so there's going to be a savings there. Uh, we're also looking at um, other services that we provide and, and trying the same tact with them, uh, and I think uh, we'll be a little successful there as well. So you think we're going to be able to keep up with our parks and you don't foresee them being... Well, I just what was frustrating, if you recall, January was a very nice month weather-wise. So you had all your spring enthusiasts out at the ball fields, okay, softball, baseball, or whatever. Okay, so we're, with the limited safe staff that Troy had, we were trying to get the softball complex in gear because high school just started yesterday the community park, then you have Harvey Park, uh, Galt Youth Baseball making some modifications there with our assistance. 
well, you try to get all those facilities going all at once, it, it, it's encumbering to staff. But now since it's rained, we bought some time. So that's it's like a roller coaster. You know, if we continue to have the weather we had in January, it would be a headache because I was getting daily calls uh, at the community park, things that should be addressed. But I won't be getting those for another week because it's too wet, which is nice. But again, in another week or so, they'll bombard all our facilities again. So it's just like a roller coaster ride. And one, one thing is, well, you could say unique about Parks and Rec, when we're doing our M&O 5%, 10% reductions, it's very difficult for me to reduce chlorine at the pool 5% because I have all these health. So one thing, say we have an advantage, and it's not an advantage but compared to other departments, we have uh, monies and part-time salaries where the majority of departments are full-time. So between my three divisions, uh, a big portion of those 5% is worth from part-time salaries because there's, you need paper products for the restroom facility, so there's some things I just can't cut. So that's why I got authorization from the manager's office to cut from my part-time salaries money. I would also like to add that um, generally as, as time goes on, we, we look at all these types of improvements and uh, to increase the, the um, service that we give to the public. And when we were asked to make these cuts, we put those type of increases on hold so we're not really affecting the service we're giving now, but we're going to be unable to um, increase the service. You know, uh, I maybe looking at a car, you put your, put your wax on in the summer, but you're not going to do a, a show quality shine on it because, you know, you're trying to save a little bit of money. And we're always, when, when the money's there, we're always trying to look for that show quality shine, but in times like this, we have to back away from it a little bit. Okay. Thank Let me just, I'd like to make a comment too. I'd like to acknowledge staff because you know, the city manager's office have a asked reduction on a lot of departments and I know 5% um, reduction doesn't seem like a lot, but it cut a lot of things that, that staff, yeah, well. training and travel things people were planning on attending and there hasn't been, you know, complaining, grumbling, people understand the economic times we're in and have been more than willing to make cuts and go above and beyond what we've asked and try to find ways, individual department has looked for ways in their own department to save money, to do more things in-house. I know planning is doing more environmental review in-house. I mean, all departments are trying to take on additional responsibilities and cut where they can. So I appreciate their willingness to do that. I do also. Uh, one more question. Uh, does this sales tax reflect the measure R increase? No. No, it does so not. that will be we, we will be bringing that in um, when we do the midterm budget process, mm -hmm. and that will not be commingled with the general fund. It will be in its fund um, on its own, so that way we can keep track of it. Right. We expect the first advance to hit sometime in June, but um, actually, it will be part of the midterm process. And and on that subject, that measure our money, you cannot offset the funding from the general fund. No. It has to be maintained. So, you know, it's going to have its own account, much like it was intended to be set up, and that money specifically. Right. to uh, create positions for more officers to get them out on the streets. Um, and I would comment that I do hope that we get uh, to do the work on the finance office to make it a little more secure. I was over there one day and it was scaring me as well. So I hope we can find the money, at least uh, that part of the budget of the uh, improvement to the city hall. and. I just want to also add that I do feel so much more relieved up here asking these questions that are important, that it's not like, well, who are we going to lay off? Who are we going to um, put on furlough? And I want to compliment the staff, especially finance, for being so conservative and, and administration for keeping us safe. And um, I have to say I'm really um, proud of the attitude that I've felt throughout the staff in the past uh, months this is this all occurring. And I think that what I'm feeling is we're looking for resources for the future to pull ourselves out of it. Under these conditions, I'm seeing a um, pretty positive attitude, which is amazing. And uh, I feel very fortunate to only, ha only have to deal with what we're dealing with. Okay. Daryl, did you have any comments? Or questions? Yeah, just, just
just a couple thoughts. Uh, I think pretty much everything's been covered, but I also want to congratulate Ted. Hey, Daryl, can you hold on a minute? We're going to try to turn the speaker up a little bit, maybe. Can you hold the mic? Can you take it a little bit down? Is that better? Go ahead. Try it now. All right, test one, two, three. Is that better? Better? Yeah, a little. <laughs> I think is it too there. loud or not loud enough? Right, we can't hardly hear you. All right, is that better? Yeah. I think that's yeah. better. Right, thank you. We can hear you now. Okay. Anyway, I don't have that much to say. I was just going to say I want to congratulate Ted and Jason and all the staff. I think you've done an excellent job going through this. Uh, as Barbara said, I think the, the spirit obviously has been there to really see what can be done. So congratulations. I think you've laid it out for us and the public very well. Um, we're, you know, on a day-by-day, -day, obviously, with the state and the federal government, so we'll just see where that all comes out, and, and you know, I'm sure you'll be giving us updates as it does. So, and uh, I would just thank the uh, council and the staff uh, for both your support and your patience. I had asked that we put off some decisions and that we not fill some positions until we could see this, and so thank you for for waiting until we could see what we've got here. So, uh, other than that, I think you've done a great job, and uh, we'll just see where. The rest of the entities around us go. I think I told you I'd had lunch with Donna Tolley, and I know the county's really wrestling with their budget, and the state's pretty obvious. So thanks again. Okay. Any other comments from staff or council? If not, um, let me ask one more sure. question, uh, and I apologize. So before you do, actually, Liz, yes? could you, I'm going to hang up. Could you redial? I've got a lot of static on here. I'm going to see if I can hear better. Okay. Um, on the issue of the fuel tax, the governor's proposing, if I remember correctly, 12 cents increase on the fuel tax. You know what I'm talking about, right? So if he increases the fuel tax by 12 cents, the sale, there's a sales tax on the fuel. And if I remember correctly, that sales tax is based on uh, the total amount of the uh, uh, per gallon, including the state and federal tax. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I believe so. So, if he raises it 12 cents, we should see a slight increase on our sales tax revenue in the area of fuel. Is that a safe statement? Actually, what I read was that they were increasing it, but they were actually trying to divert that for other purposes, that it would not be an increase to local government. So that was information. Oh, so it won't affect the sales tax side of it? Not, 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 from, not for the city's perspective. Okay. So even though it was going to be used to uh, fund other items, they were trying to look at... Um, I believe it was, I'm trying to think of which tax that actually was, but my understanding is that it would not be an increase to the city of Galt. Okay. And I, I will look at some of my monthly reports because I think I actually did an analysis on that. Okay. I thought one of the reasons that they uh, put the sales tax on the total gallon, a dollar amount on the, uh, of a gallon of gas was because of the difficulty of going out and breaking down the amount of, to separate out the state and federal tax and, and the sales tax that would be uh, put on that difference. So I was thinking that if they raised it another 12 cents, that they would have that same difficulty and that the sales tax would apply. That's what I was thinking. I, I don't recall that. Um, being in the draft information I received, so. Okay, uh, but you've answered my question, the 12 cents. I was just wanting to know if we would get anything gained from it. I wasn't aware of that, no. Thank you, that was the only thing I had to thank you, I apologize. Okay, well, I feel, just to restate what the council members and most of you guys ask what I wanted to ask about taxes and everything, thank, thanks to all of you, but I feel uh, very comfortable and, and I know that you guys are very competent and you're good employees you're concerned. I know that the department heads, you look over your budgets on a continual basis. You always have in the past, and I know you're doing it even more so now. So I do appreciate that. One thing I would like to uh, direct is the city manager's office, along with in conjunction with the city clerk, if, if you guys could do a news release for us. And that way, when you uh, get it done concerning you know the mid-year budget, the review, and then CC copies, e email or whatever council chooses. Maybe I think a couple of them like hard copies, but uh, I think that would uh, help us a lot when we're out talking to different people and getting phone calls. And uh, it's right up front. Sure. So, uh, just so that you know, I've received phone calls today from both the Sacramento Bee and the Lodi News. So there may be articles tomorrow already about sure. this budget workshop. Right. So it'll be okay. good. It'll be good.
can also put something together and have a conversation with the Gall Herald, too, so they can run a story next week. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's no other comment or any questions, uh, we were going to do a closed session. We uh, weren't able to do that, so we will need to adjourn to a special closed session. And I'll ask the city clerk if she would read the two items for us, please. Yeah. Item right. number one, okay. conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, citizens for yes on recall at all versus city of Galt. Number two, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, one potential case. Okay. Thank you. And the, well, we're, we're adjourning to the closed yeah. session, so yeah. And it was at like seven fourteen. I didn't hit the gap. I just said we were adjourning. Carol, I'll call you back. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> 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 All right, I had to put the sandwiches in the fridge. <laughs> 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 Another agency is actually paid for the training. So maybe we get that. Yeah, I remember that stuff. Cover too. Don't leave again. Yep.